Hi guys, so today it's all about breakfast. Hi guys, so today I want to talk about breakfast. Breakfast is a meal a lot of people get wrong. Now before I start talking about the do's and do nots of breakfast, I just want to say that a lot of people overemphasize the importance of having breakfast, literally the moment you get up, yeah, you've got to have breakfast, you've got to have breakfast. Some people just don't like having a meal the moment after they wake up. They like to sort of settle into their day, they might have a coffee or something, they don't have it first thing. So don't stress if you're one of those people that you've suddenly got to change your, your lifestyle. Yeah. Fit it into what works for you. It's not hugely important, the timing of when you have your breakfast, so please don't stress about that. Okay, now let's talk about common mistakes people make with breakfast. And I think it probably comes from some kind of marketing campaign or um, just habits, but people have traditionally for breakfast a few things, orange juice or fruit juice of some kind. And then, and these are people that think they're having a healthy breakfast, by the way. I mean, some kind of fruit juice, cereals or toast, or maybe a fruit smoothie. That's kind of uh, what I get from most people in terms of when they talk about w what they're having for breakfast. Traditionally, that's what you see in most people's breakfast diet. Now, we've got a problem with a lot of that. Orange juice, I'm going to start with. Orange juice is one of my pet peeves. It's sold as this super, super healthy drink. And yes, there is vitamin C and some nutri nutritional benefits from eating fruit. And some of that is lost when you juice that fruit, especially when it's commercially juiced. Um, but the big thing with fruit juice is the amount of calories you get from sugar. So you get probably between 75 to 85% of the calories from sugar in fruit juices. So an average 100 milliliters of orange juice contains between 8 to 10 grams of sugar, 100 milliliters of Coca-Cola contains 10 grams of sugar. So I'll give you breakfast choices. You probably wouldn't give that to your child or for yourself. Hopefully you're not doing it yourself, drinking a can of Coke for breakfast. So don't pour a massive glass of orange juice in the morning if you're thinking of having a healthy breakfast. Because we're trying to avoid what we want to avoid throughout the whole day because breakfast is another meal. So it should fit the same profile as every other meal in that day. We're trying to avoid massive spikes, okay, in your blood sugar and having just a high concentrate of sugar for breakfast is not ideal. So if you, if you just like to sort of clear the palate with orange juice, that's fine, but make sure you keep that portion small, okay? A small glass of orange juice is absolutely fine, not a big old glass like that. Um, cereal, again, generally high starchy um, content, quite a bit, kind of out of sugar, a lot of carbs. Around, most, most cereals are around 70 out of the 100 on the glycemic index, which is a higher end, um, which means it's going to give you, again, another spike in your blood sugar. So it's going to be one of those where you get the energy quick and it dissipates, so you feel hungry um, quite soon after your meal. So cereals generally, and that includes the ones that are branded as healthy cereals, especially things like granola and stuff because they're often mixed with loads of honey and sugar and they're generally quite sweet or loads of dried fruit in there so they generally are even higher on that glycemic index so just be aware of that um, if you're having cereal for breakfast so um, I'll talk about it later but cereal like granola and that should be used maybe as a topper rather than as the main portion in your breakfast fruit smoothies where do I start well generally fruit smoothies are you know you blend together all those frozen blackberries and blueberries and every other berry you can think of shove it in there with a banana, um, some milk, or you might buy the smoothie as well. Again, ridiculously high sugar content in those. I mean, I suppose you could say there's some fiber in there that will help negate some of that, but ridiculously high. I mean, you, again, drink a milkshake if you're going to do that. Go to McDonald's, get yourself a milkshake, because it's going to be the same uh, effect on you, apart from you're going to get a few more nutrients in that, in that element of fruit. So breakfast smoothies, not great. Um, I know that people are trying to strive to get their five a day or trying to get their vitamin C content, but there's more vitamin C in uh, green leafy veg per gram and in peppers, okay, bell peppers, not the thing you have those breakfast, but bell peppers per gram than there is in an orange. So don't obsess that you have to have that to get vitamin C. You're not going to get scurvy, okay? You're going to still get vitamin C without eating 10 
bottles of orange juice a week. Okay, so think about what you're doing with choices there. So take those out, or if you're going to have them, again, tiny, tiny portions. That's like a treat, really. And toast. Well, toast, when we talk about what we should have for breakfast, toast could be put into the good pile. Not white, white bread. Okay, white bread, too high in starch. So scrap that. But um, some good quality bread is fine as long as we're balancing that out. Okay, so toast and marmalade or something high sugar spread, no, that's, not, that's a no go. But toast with, and what we want in our breakfast, we want proteins, we want fats. I personally um, don't think we want too many carbohydrates. A lot of people might have a different belief, but um, from evidence I've seen with my clients and myself, too many carbohydrates isn't going to help you, first of all, sustain your um, appetite or keep your appetite sort of in check. Um, and it's definitely not going to help if you're trying to make a change to your body composition. So if you're going to have breakfast with toast in it, make sure you've got a large portion of proteins and fats in there. So a very simple one would be one slice of toast, um, seeded toast, maybe with some butter on top for your fats, spread a bit of avocado on there as well, and a couple of eggs, and then you've got fully balanced breakfast. If you want to put some green veg on the side, brilliant. Um, that's how you're going to stick toast in there. You could have toast with peanut butter, as long as it's organic and no added sugar peanut butter. If you wanted the spread to put on there, that's probably going to be your healthiest option uh, for, that, for that day. The other options for good breakfast, omelets, anything in that omelet, peppers, uh, spinach. You can put some meat in there as well. Omelets are a great choice. My personal choice, and I get up really early in the morning, so I have to get to work. I have to leave before 6 a.m. every morning to get to work. Uh, and I'm not a uh, get up really early, you know, spend time making really extravagant breakfast. So what I do is I get Greek yogurt, full fat Greek yogurt. I don't do no zero fat stuff. Okay, normal, real Greek yogurt because I want some fats in my diet. And I chuck in, again, some organic, natural peanut butter. Chuck that in there. You could use another nut butter if you want. That's going to give me some proteins and fats as well. And just gobble that down. That's a nice, easy breakfast. That's my alternative um, to like a bowl of cereal. But if you wanted to put, say you had Greek yogurt, and you wanted to put some granola on top, just a little topping of that would be absolutely fine. Um, porridge. Porridge works. It's a lower, it's lower glycemic index than other cereals, so that's probably the best choice in terms of cereals. Um, add a, add a, add a uh, milk that's got some fat in there. Okay, skim milk. I don't think it's great because there's no fats. You want to have some fats in there, so add, a, add some kind of fatty milk, whether that's uh, almond milk or whether that's dairy milk. <laughs> Not a dairy milk. <laughs> milk from a cow. Then uh, that would be great too. Alternatively, you could always have last night's leftovers. If you've got a thing that breakfast has to be a certain type of meal, then obviously you won't do that, but you can have last night's leftovers as well. That works just as well because it's the same if last night's leftovers were a healthy meal, that is. Not last night's Chinese. But um, if it was a healthy meal, you could just have that in the morning. Again, it's just the same meal profile you're looking for. So the fact that it's breakfast doesn't make it any different. Um, or if you wanted something to sort of take on the train, you could always get a wrap and put some healthy ingredients inside there, some kind of proteins and um, fat sauce in there as well. So there's your healthy choices for breakfast. Scrap the old thought on breakfast. Don't obsess about it having to be before work, you know, first thing you get up in the morning. If you're not that type of person, make sure all of your breakfasts contain a mixture of protein and fats. If you want some carbs, stick a few in there as well. I hope that helps, guys. If you've got any questions or anything, please put them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.